I'm Heather Smith with BarrelRacingTips.com and today we're going to talk bits. How to choose them and how to use them. Once we're aware and educated on the importance of building our horse's physical, emotional, and mental foundations, it's important as we set out to do that from the beginning all the way through the point in time when we're thinking about the type of bits we tr will truly complement our individual horses and bring out their very best in a run, that we recognize and consistently seek out and utilize quality tools. Now, a price it's not always a guarantee of quality, but it's usually a good indicator. You often get what you pay for. I'm very particular, for example, about the halters I use and even the horsemanship sticks because like bits, they also are all made of different materials, lengths, widths, weights, specific blends, weaves, etc. And how these tools are made determines how well the energy we send down the line will be transmitted and received by the horse. For example, you can see the difference here between a quality halter and lead and a cheap one. When I put a feel on a rein or a line, I want that to have meaning and the difference would be like comparing having the latest high-tech cell phone to trying to communicate effective, effectively with the old tin can and string setup. The same goes for bits. Quality bits are made in ways that are comfortable for horses and weighted the right amount in the right areas to have balance and to release quickly and essentially help us as trainers and jockeys be even more effective. So I'm going to go over some bits I have in my tack room. I'll talk about a few popular styles that I don't happen to have, but I'll also talk about um, the common questions, the parts of the bit, their function, and address what commonly comes up. We'll talk about different styles, different riding styles, different horses, and it'll all be information that I think will be valuable to you to choose the headgear that's perfect for your horse. Keep in mind that bits aren't for fixing problems, they're for serving as a way to relay information, and if the message is not getting through, more often than not, it's the person delivering the message that has the problem. Just like spoons don't make people fat and guns don't kill people. I think it's important for all of us to take responsibility for consistently learning and enhancing our ability to communicate effectively and also recognize and address the physical and emotional blocks that get in the way of that. And in the long run, we'll essentially create horses that are even more solid and consistent on a more organic level without any extreme dependence on mechanical means. Quality tools are important at every stage of our horse's development and in every way that we communicate with them. And we can enhance what should already be effective communication coming from with what starts with our mind and bodies with these quality tools. So like I mentioned, I'm very, very particular about the quality of my halters. And one of the things I make a real priority is teaching my horses to respond to steady pressure um, from a halter so that they know what um, the pressure they accept and they understand what steady pressure means, especially on their nose and under their chin. And those are things that are going to be just effortless and weightless and very, very light before I would ever consider putting anything in their mouth. And basically, once a horse understands that concept, you're just setting them up even more so for success so that you're less likely to ever have to like pull and not really get the kind of response you're looking for. Because we never want to set our horses up to basically spend very much time leaning on us or doing something that we essentially don't want them to do and getting even more practiced at it. As far as uh, snaffles, I ride in them um, a fair amount. And there's something that you have to um, be pretty savvy as far as maintaining lightness in your horse's positioning and their body and so forth. Um, to ride in them often and to ride in them long term. And so um, the next step as far as the transition bit when you're moving from a snaffle into something that has some um, curb strap, 
would be just your basic, like I have a couple, um, they're like tender touch bits from Sharon Camarillo, like the Junior Cow Horse is a popular one. Basically it's something that has a relatively short uh, shank and purchase. It has a little bit of a gag action and usually there's some sort of broken mouthpiece. Um, as far as mouthpieces go, this really just, um, what you use here depends a lot on your individual horse and what they prefer. So it's good to just have kind of a handful, a half a dozen or so, um, that you can introduce to your horse and just be really receptive to what seems to, um, what se they seem to be more um, appreciative and accepting of. As far as curve straps go, um, I have a variety, like I have a few that are a chain. Most of them are leather on the ends and a chain in the center. This can, curve straps can make a huge difference. If your horse is very, very sensitive and you might want to use just nothing more than a leather one at all times. It really, it really just depends. And um, of course what we use is also going to depend not just on our horse but um, also on our tendencies as riders. And so. Again, we never um, want to get this mindset of like, well, my horse doesn't like this, or I don't, you know, this isn't working for me. Uh, oftentimes we have to like look under, underneath that and find out, well, how do I need to better prepare my horse? How do I need to be a better jockey and rider and trainer? Um, so that we don't have to make these special exceptions everywhere. But then at the same time, at the highest levels, no that those really little, delicate little adjustments can really make a huge difference. So when it comes to adjustments, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is that um, usually when you go to put your bridle on your horse, it's going to kind of slide over the ears a little bit hard, like it's not going, if it's adjusted correctly. The exception would be like a snaffle. I actually like my horses to kind of pack that around where there is no wrinkle in the side of their mouth, where they actually carry it and it has some weight to it so that it's even more clear when you pick up and release the reins. Um, when you release, um, you know, there's a little bit of a, a drop there. Um, gag bits especially need, you're going to want to have a little bit of a, of a wrinkle there just because they are designed to be a little bit slow acting because of the, um, the, the way they're designed, you know, a gag bit is essentially, um, which, you know, the word gag doesn't really sound very positive, but it's essentially just a bit with a sliding mouthpiece. And they all come with um, a variety as far as the amount of that action. So this bit here has um, a fair amount of gag action, and this one has just, you know, a little bit less. And so if a bit had a lot of gag action, then I might even adjust it a little bit um, tighter. And so the thing to keep in mind is that whenever you're drawing your bit up further in your horse's mouth, then you're going to have to, again, look at the curb strap adjustment because your horse's jaw gets bigger and wider as it goes up. And so when you adjust the sides of your bridle, then you'll need to look at and potentially adjust the curb strap also because that changes. And I usually follow the two finger rule, like you should be able to fit two fingers underneath your, your curb strap, but again, that's something that you might change based on your preferences, based on your horse's preferences, based on the conditions that you're running in, and so forth. Again, when it comes to mouthpieces, some horses prefer more tongue relief. Some horses are not very accepting it at all when there's a high port and if that gets engaged too far there'll be some pressure on their palate and a lot of horses really um, are not accepting of that. It's our job to help our horses be accepting of bits but again at the same time it's like well let's be open you know to what our horse is telling us is, is their, their preferences at the same time and have reverence and respect for that. This is like um, a pretzel type of bit. A person has to have really be very careful and have really light hands to do something like this. There's no gag action at all because um, this, the mouthpiece here doesn't slide. And um, so the reaction time here, I mean, everything happens pretty quickly. And usually what happens when we're going through and trying a lot of bits and something kind of improves or it works for a while but not long term, that's usually an indicator that we need to go back and it's something that we're not providing to our horses 
um, that is the actual problem. So just be aware of that as a red flag. I think um, often as braille racers we put a little bit too much focus on, on the mechanics and although it's important we tend to neglect um, the subject of teaching ourselves how to use them um, or just how to have feel and good timing in general. And so along that idea is um, whenever it comes to bits, I just really recommend going with a quality um, bit maker and definitely not just going with whatever's cheapest, you know, at your local tax store. But when it comes to properly using bits, it's a good idea to research the, ta the bit maker and actually contact them and try to get as much information as possible about the best way to use specific bits because um, that can make a huge difference like certain bits might work best when you use your hands in like a certain way for example. So as we're going along here I have um, some bits that have some pretty varying degrees of lengths of shank and lengths of the purchase. So like this would be the length of the purchase um, above you know the mouthpiece and this is the length of the shank. And so on this this bit it's about a one to one ratio that's about the same the same length. So this is probably two or almost three to one, so this has much more um, down here on the bottom than it does at the top. And so what that essentially means is that this what's down here at the bottom is really what creates lift in the front end and engagement of the hind end. And you're going to have even more of that lift um, and less bend the more locked pieces there are. So if you have a bit that is hobbled at the bottom, or if you have a bit that does not hinge out and move and the shanks don't come out to the side, then that is really even more so going to stiffen up your horse through his body. So the more moving parts a bit has, the more bend it's going to produce. Um, the same thing goes for the more bend we have in our body and our elbow, the more bend our horse is going to have in their body. The more leverage creates a lift that is sort of, I'll try to model it in my body, where you get some flexion of the pole and you get some lift, but with the higher purchase, it's almost like um, the horse's top line sort of rotates and gets rounder. So instead of like the, the shoulders coming up and the chin going down, like with more leverage, I think with a higher purchase versus a longer shank, it's like the the rounding and the lifting is more it's more rounder over the top line as if the horse's ears are rotating forward and this is a chain bit and so this something to keep in mind with them is that as the chain twists from one end to the other they're never actually going to have the exact same feel on one side as you do the other they offer like a lot of flexibility through through the mouthpiece and you can um, keep some lateral bend in your horse and if like if this were to have hobbles you could also create you know you could have leverage and it could create some lift too. So again this is another type of bit that was borrowed from um, the roper in my life. It, uh, it again has a uh, locked you know the mouthpiece can swivel out to the side which just allows you to have some communication with one side of your horse's body and not as much on the other versus a bit that was totally straight and connected means that everything you do on one side is really going to be felt on the other. Here I have this Bozo side pull that you've probably seen me use and compete in a lot on my gelding pistol. You know it does allow for a little bit of lateral movement but in general hackamores do tend to lend to stiffness over time. I like personally like the idea of switching gears and changing bits from time to time because it keeps both my horse and I honest. Like for example, if my horse ever started to get a little bit dull in something, you know, like this, then I would, pretty, I would be in trouble. And then the other thing is that it's easy for a horse to get in the habit of not really having very good posture, you know, if we're like not totally on our game in these bits that don't really offer a whole lot as far as helping the body be in good position. The other thing to keep in mind as far as how you're handling them and how you're using the bit is that um, some riders and horses tend to use like more, handle them more, tend to use more contact. Some horses actually like appreciate contact. It's like hand holding for them. You know the rider can keep in communication with that horse without losing any forward motion and it's almost like that constant contact is sort of like stringing a bow where there's this little bit of tension that's consistent 
and why you keep the forward motion. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Getting a horse working is one thing, but keeping him working is another thing entirely. And none of us are perfect and our conditions aren't perfect. And our horses aren't perfect. Um, there is a huge difference in athletic ability. And, and that, that's a big factor. And that's something where um, a freak of nature horse is um, not you know, going to be quite as dependent. Um, it's not going to be maybe as critical as a horse who just needs more help. And that's again where like we have to just come in and raise the bar and do our part to prepare them even more. I hope this bit of information has been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.